Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today, I'm feeling a little bit nervous because we're going to be doing something I have never done in Survival Minecraft before. It's happened on servers that I have played on in the past, but I've never done this myself. I've never done it in a single player world or anything like that. We are going to be going to the roof of the nether, the above the bedrock ceiling in the nether, and we are going to be breaking bedrock so that we can get up there whenever we want to. You might wonder why I'm tackling this this early in the series, because I mean, obviously we're on episode 102 here, but it seems like quite an advanced thing to do, considering that we're still only farming a few resources and that we haven't got super advanced stuff set up yet. The reason for that is quite simple. Right now, I'm playing in Minecraft version 1.13.2. And at the time of this recording, Minecraft 1.14, the next major update, also known as the Village and Pillage update for Java Edition, is on its way. It's not going to be coming out right away, but they are in the bug fixing phase. All of the features of it are pretty much done, and for all I know, it could be coming out as early as in the next month. Therefore, I think it's possible that the glitch that we're going to be using to break bedrock on the nether ceiling could potentially be patched out of the game. And so I've decided it makes more sense to go ahead and break the bedrock on the nether ceiling now so that we can get up there in future than it does to wait around to do this later in the series when it may not even be possible to do anymore. Considering that it is, technically speaking, a bug that we're exploiting to break bedrock, it's potentially going to be patched out of future releases and there's going to be a different method to break it or it's not going to be possible to break it at all. So what I'm going to do today is go to the nether ceiling, break some bedrock and do that all in the current version of Minecraft 1.13.2 before there's any chance for it to be removed from the game entirely. And we're going to do this in two stages. The first step is just going to be getting up onto the nether roof and establishing a safe way back that does not involve us breaking bedrock at all because the most important part of this is making sure you don't get trapped on the bedrock ceiling and uh, there is every opportunity for that to happen so we're going to need a little bit of equipment to bring with us to do that we're going to need a minecart we're going to bring some obsidian and a flint and steel so that we can light a nether portal up there and we're going to need some ender pearls which i should have in here yep okay i will grab those i'll grab a flint and steel which i think i should have in my backup gear nope not in there there must be one in the farmhouse though so i will grab one from there not a problem let's grab the fortune pickaxe as well just so i can have that with me and i'll put away some of this other stuff we've got ender pearls now fantastic next up we will need a little bit of minecart rail and that flint and steel from the farmhouse so let's talk a little bit about where bedrock can be found in the world and why you might want to break it because in the overworld of course we don't have a bedrock above us like in the nether we just have bedrock below and towards the bottom of the world it's not strictly necessary to break bedrock most of the time you don't really need to do it for any particular reason unless you're building something right at the bottom of the world and for whatever reason a redstone mechanism you're building won't fit but it's just the most convenient for it to be placed at like y equals four or something like that around the areas where bedrock will start to generate at the bottom of the world that is probably the only occasion on which you'll need to break bedrock in the overworld. It's also worth noting that breaking bedrock in the overworld at the very bottom of the world can potentially open a hole into the void, which is basically like falling into the void in the end. It's pretty much an instant death if you fall through it. You don't want to see that. So it's it's really kind of for your own safety that you don't tend to break bedrock on the floor of the overworld. And the same goes really for the floor of the nether. Like you don't tend to see much of the floor of the nether in any case because there's no reason to build down there and most of the time it's underneath a lava lake or there's a lot of lava generating down there. So the main place we're going to want to break bedrock and make sure it stays broken so we can get up there again is the nether ceiling. Now to get to the nether ceiling I have brought the following supplies. Some obsidian so that we can make a portal once we're up there and a flint and steel or something at least that you can use to light it. A minecart a piece of rail and some ender pearls. That is, in theory, all you will need to get to the roof of the nether. Now, it might help us if we bring some building blocks and some ladders just to make it easier to get up that high in the first place. Let's bring some andesite because I've got a lot of that hanging around in this chest. We've only got a few ladders, but I will bring some extra ones as well. There we go, got a stack of ladders. That should be enough. Let's go to the nether hub. And while we're here, let's briefly consider the structure of the nether because in the overworld, you have bedrock at the bottom of the world at about Y0 and then build height in the overworld, the maximum point at which you can build and in fact, the maximum point that any terrain can generate is Y256. Now that's a hard limit. <laughs> Above that, Minecraft will not generate any terrain. You will not be able to place anything. 
and it's basically the utmost point of the world. It's possible to fly higher than that, but there's no real reason to. There's nothing there. In the Nether, however, we have a slightly different structure, because the Nether is a giant cavern, and it has bedrock at the bottom of the world and at the top of the world. The thing about that is that the bedrock at the bottom is at Y0, much like it is in the overworld. The bedrock ceiling is at Y128, or I think more accurately it's around Y127, but effectively it is half the space of the dimension of the overworld. However, the nether dimension, the build limit for the nether, actually continues up to Y256, much the same way as it does in the overworld. So it is technically possible to build on the ceiling of the nether, it's just not really possible to go there. Or perhaps more accurately, it's not intended for you to get onto the roof of the nether. The bedrock is there to stop you doing that, but we are not going to be stopped by the bedrock today. We are going to pillar up to the nether ceiling, and we are going to make it happen. Now, I need to warn you in advance, obviously, about digging up in the nether. You're probably going to find a pocket of lava here and there that might end up falling on your head. So just be very careful when you do this, and make sure you have blocks on your hotbar, or alternatively, ladders. Because ladders are kind of useful for blocking liquids and I'm actually going to build up here using ladders and prevent any lava from falling on me that way although hopefully we should get lucky and not have to deal with lava at all. Have some uh, ladders in your offhand and use a pickaxe in your main hand and you'll be able to place ladders just by holding right click and break blocks by holding left click. If you hold both of them together you can actually make a path directly up to the nether ceiling like that and the ladders will block any lava falling on you from above. That's usually a pretty good way of doing that until you can make sure that you can neutralize the lava source and not have to worry about it. So here we are, we are up at Y122. We want to be standing, ideally, at Y125 to find the thinnest point of the nether ceiling that we can get through using the equipment I've brought with me. So I'm going to do a little bit of digging around here just to see if we can get up a little bit higher. There are only going to be a few spots in the nether where we can do this. That is at Y124. That is not going to be good enough. We will need to do a little bit more searching around here for a spot that's at Y125. And here, I think I've got one. Okay, great. That's really not too far away from here. The nether ceiling, by the way, the bedrock in the nether ceiling, always generates exactly the same. <laughs> At least I'm pretty sure this is still the case. The bedrock algorithm was changed recently so that some areas of it were like different from what they were in previous versions, but I'm fairly certain that if you have the coordinates in one world, you have the coordinates in all of them when it comes to finding spaces where the bedrock roof is thin. So right here, we're going to be using this space at 922. And in theory, if I can step up here like so, we have a space that is at Y125. This is going to be perfect for our needs. Now, <laughs> exactly what we do here is going to be a little bit tricky, and I might need to potentially block myself in here. We're going to place a netherrack block there, and we're going to be able to place a minecart rail on top of this. Now, what we're about to do is going to be dangerous. It's going to lead to me taking a little bit of suffocation damage. I'm going to try and explain it as best I can before I do it, because this is a method for getting onto the nether ceiling. First, we need to make sure that we've got the supplies. We need to double check that we've got the supplies to get us back home again. We've got some obsidian. We've got a means to light it. We can create a nether portal on the roof of the nether. That's going to be fine. Next, we need to place a minecart on this rail here. So the minecart is actually sitting at head height when we are at Y125. The coordinates are very important here. Now I've got some ender pearls in my hotbar and this is what I'm about to do. I'm going to right click to get into this minecart. I'm going to start taking suffocation damage when I do that, but as quickly as possible I'm going to press shift to exit the minecart and I'll just be standing straight up on this block. Once I've done that, I should be able to jump in order to see the nether ceiling and I can throw an ender pearl onto the nether ceiling from there. This is all going to happen quite fast, so I recommend trying this in like a creative test world or something first just to see if it's possible for you to do this. It's going to take a little bit of quick thinking, a little bit of quick reflexes, but hopefully you guys should be able to handle it. So I'm going to get into the minecart, going to press shift to stand up. Oh, that's pushed me back a little bit. Okay, that shouldn't be a problem. If you need to, you can, I think, break the rail underneath here, and that will prevent the minecart from rolling around too much if you're in the same space as it. So let's get into the minecart, let's stand up. There we go. If I jump, I can see the roof of the nether. I'm going to end a pearl and I'm up there. And that only took a little bit of damage and that was only because I was explaining it to you guys 
as I went. So that was not too bad. That was pretty clean as it goes. Only needed one ender pearl, but bring a stack with you because this can go wrong very quickly and then you're suffocating in bedrock. Now comes the important step of making a nether portal back home. Right now, our coordinates are roughly the same as the portal to the overworld that I first established when I came into the nether, the portal that leads to the farm where the farmhouse is and my base is. If I build a portal up here on the roof of the nether, it's going to lead directly back to that farmhouse portal as long as I build it within range. And so effectively, considering we basically just dug straight up from where that portal is, all I should need to do is make a portal up here, light it, and this will take me back to the farmhouse. So let's give that a try, shall we? Fingers crossed that this all goes well and nothing has messed up with the maths. Here we are, we're back at the farmhouse, we've come here from the roof of the nether, and everything has now been established on the roof of the nether. That's perfect. Okay, now when we go back through this portal, it's not going to lead to that nether roof portal anymore. Even if this was the only portal around, even if this portal was broken, it would not lead to the portal on the nether roof. The nether roof is not meant to be accessible by any means. Therefore, even if you built a nether portal at world height, if you built it up at Y252, and that was like the highest possible that you could build a nether portal in the world, you would not get onto the roof of the nether with that portal. Nether portals are only ever meant to take you within the 128 block bounds of the main section of the nether. So a nether portal is not going to be a permanent solution to get to and from the nether. It's mainly just there to make sure I can get home in the, in the uh, event of an emergency and while we need to gather the supplies that we need to actually break some bedrock. Okay, so I spent a little bit of time gathering supplies, and this is going to be a very, very weird process. <laughs> this is not something that feels at all natural, but it is something that I think right now is going to be essential for us to do, so we're going to go ahead and do it. I have gathered some supplies here. We will need a few minecarts, some TNT to go in the minecarts. These are actually going to be TNT minecarts. I may as well craft those now. We've got some redstone blocks and some redstone dust. We will need a minimal amount of that some rails here as well of all different types. We've got regular rail, powered rail, detector rail, and activator rail. We've got some obsidian, which is going to be very important to have because it's a, a block that cannot explode on top of the nether. And as you can tell from the TNT, we're going to be doing a little bit of exploding stuff. We also have a bunch of pistons, some regular pistons, some sticky pistons. Both are required for this. We will need a slime block or two. We'll need some levers and we'll need some building blocks and specifically building block slabs. So make sure you bring at least a crafting table that you can use to make slabs out of some material that you've got with you. I think according to the tutorial I'm watching, which is by a guy called Raging Donut, that will be linked in the description. This should be the bulk of what we need. And now at least we've got the nether portal up there. We can rest easy and come back to the overworld if we need anything else. So let's get back over to the roof of the nether. Let's find the same place that I came up before and let's see if we can do this. And here we go. There is our minecart again. Now, one important thing I think is going to be to take the coordinates of this block in particular or that block there. But once I get up to the nether roof and I end a pearl away, I'm not gonna know exactly where I came up. And in order to break the bedrock, what we really want to do is break a block that means there is a complete hole down to the nether itself. So we we don't want to end up breaking a bedrock piece there and then have to break two more underneath it in order to, to achieve our goals. We want a hole clean through the nether roof there. And we can break a little bit more around it as we go. We don't have to get this right first time. We've always got that nether portal back to the overworld if we need it, but... It is always better if you can get this thing right first time, basically. So I'm going to F3 and take a screenshot of the coordinates. We want 922 is the coordinates of this block here. That is ideally the block we want to break if we're going to be breaking any bedrock block at all. It's going to be this one. So let's do the same trick as before. Get into the minecart, stand up and end a pearl. There we go. Fantastic. Now, 922 is this block here. So we're going to be aiming to break that one there. The next big step, I believe, is to find out which way north is because we're going to be placing some stuff in very specific directions here. We need to find out that that is north, so north is towards our nether portal, that's nice and easy to remember, and we're going to be facing south for this trick, which is, it's weird. The, the, the tutorial doesn't really go into exactly why this stuff needs to happen, but 
if you're okay with the explanation of just, it's a glitch, then <laughs> hopefully you should be fine with this. So let's get out our box of stuff, let's grab some redstone dust, because facing south, you want to place a redstone piece there, basically, like on the western side of the block that you want to break. It's going to start there. Now let's grab some of the rails and stuff as well. That's going to be the next step of this. We want to put a detector rail there. We want it to curve around the corner with a regular rail into first an activator rail and then a powered rail like so. We're going to grab a couple of redstone blocks out of here. I can take the F3 coordinates away now and we're going to power those two like so. We also need rails on these two redstone blocks for some reason and I think these rails need to be straight so maybe we should place that independently of the powered rail. There we go. Now we're going to be placing some obsidian blocks here and here. That one's going to have the minecart pushed against it. And this one is just there to help us place the next thing where we're going to get a sticky piston and a regular piston. Now the sticky piston needs to be facing down here, which is a little bit tricky to do. If you look at the corner, the top right corner of that, you should be able to place that one facing down. And you can also place a regular piston facing down on this side like so. So sticky piston there, regular piston there. These textures are a little bit difficult to tell from the sides which is which, but the sticky piston needs to be directly above the block that you want to break and the other piston needs to be on the side here. Now we can get rid of that block, that's just there for placement. We need to put two rails on top of these and then on top of that we'll place two redstone blocks and then two rails need to go on top of that one as well. So two regular rails on top of there and this is the point at which we can start to detonate things. So we're going to take one of our TNT minecarts, place it on this powered rail and then step back because that's going to break the heads of these two pistons and they're going to look really weird for the moment because as you can see it's like the entire piston body is still there but the head texture of the pistons is gone. We can now clear up all of these extra blocks and rails over here because we won't be needing them anymore and you can salvage those to break another bedrock block if for whatever reason the one you wanted to break the first time around doesn't work out for us. The next step is to realign ourselves with north and place a sticky piston there like so. So if the piston head extended it would be underneath the head of the sticky piston that we've just blown up the piston head from. We should now also be able to remove this redstone block and rail here and by activating this sticky piston there we go. They sort of swap piston heads and that rail goes away there as well. So that is now an empty piston head there and we can get rid of this piston entirely. So we can recollect that one and as you'll see this one here is still missing a piston head. This one here is now missing a piston head as well. That right there should be the bedrock block that we are planning to break. Now the tutorial has us come around so we're facing south again. Build a block on top of that, add a lever to the side of it, which I should have a couple in there, and switch that lever on, which, as you can see, doesn't do anything to the piston. It doesn't even register the fact that this is a piston anymore. We should now be able to take out this redstone block here, the rail on top of it, and the rail on top of that piston, making sure that you don't break the piston itself. Next up, facing north, we're going to place the sticky piston against this missing piston head here, so that we can have it face outwards like that. It should be pointing south like so. We're going to attach a slime block to it there. We're going to put a block of any kind underneath and this is where we all need the slab as well. We need to grab a slab from the shulker box. We're going to be placing the slab against the side of this piston head so that we can use our elytra to duck under it. Remember the elytra crawling technique that I showed you guys previously? We can crawl underneath it like that and the last thing we're going to do is place a piston directly underneath there so it's facing down like so. There you go. A little bit tricky to place that. And it is possible to push that into place with pistons beforehand if you don't have the elytra crawling trick. But by this point in the game, you probably have elytra anyway. So it's nothing too much you need to worry about. Now I think we can remove this slab. And now with that slab gone, the last thing we want to do is place a piston facing this way and it should activate so it is pointing north. And we're going to place a final building block there. I think that's where we place it. Okay. On the opposite side from the lever there. And when we do this, a few weird things are going to happen. We should see a piston pop out of the center here. And when we flick this lever, there we go. That should have broken the bedrock block directly underneath this piston. Let's see if it worked. And it did. We have ourselves a hole in the bedrock ceiling. How weird is that, folks? <laughs> That's the weirdest method of doing something I've ever seen. And the people who've come up with this stuff in the first place are incredibly clever. I feel like I only understand a fraction of what went into this. I have a little, like, inkling of an idea. I know sort of what's going on. 
And so I can try my best to explain this to you guys, but it will probably be pretty wrong. But before I do that, we have a hole here in the nether ceiling. So now I can just dig all the way down to whatever area that comes out in the nether. We can establish a ladder straight up. And from now on, we will have access to the nether ceiling whenever we want it. Now, like I said, I'm not immediately going to go and build the, like an OP gold farm up here. Just the fact that we have access to this area is enough for now. And that bedrock breaking trick might be necessary to do in future. So maybe we will end up doing that at some point. Maybe if there is a new method that comes out for 1.14, we'll be able to cover that. Maybe if this method even still works in 1.14, that would be fine. There are a couple of other ways you can break bedrock right now, but they're also, they're reliant on a couple of things that I feel like aren't quite as reliable for you as a player. So that's the method I've got for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. So what I'm now going to do is fill this hole in with netherrack so that I can perform basically the same process again using this block here. And I will try and explain how I think this is working. To start off with, we need our detector rail circuit around here. We need this curve and we need this powered rail to go here. Obviously, the two redstone blocks here are powering the rail. I still don't have much of an idea of why they want these rails to be here on top of it, but it's probably something to do with the minecart position. Obviously, this obsidian block is there to have the minecart placed against it. This one here is there for placement of the pistons in a moment, but it also prevents explosion damage, I think, destroying the entire piston here. So we've got a sticky piston facing downwards. We have a regular piston facing downwards. And the point here is to destroy the heads of the pistons. That is done by a weird system of block updates because there was a, uh, a stage where this went wrong for me in testing that I think I now know why. Because if you pillar up standing on this block here, when you destroy the block that you've been pillaring with, it gives these pistons an update from the redstone blocks that you place above them here. So these pistons, because of the rail being there, are technically powered. And if you give them a block update right now, they will actually extend and that's kind of what's going on with the TNT minecart here. I'm not certain quite what the rails do, but they seem to sort of isolate you from explosions a little bit. So I think that's sort of what's going on with the rails being on top of all of this stuff. Now, the reason I pillared one block to the side is that that's not going to update these pistons. Whereas if I place a block in that space right now, both of these pistons are going to extend because they receive a block update. The thing the TNT minecart does is effectively activate this detector rail, the redstone there updates, and <laughs> what that does is update the pistons at the split second the TNT minecart explodes. So a weird kind of glitch happens where the piston heads get completely erased from existence, but the piston blocks do not. And that happens like so, there you go. We have ourselves two pistons with missing piston heads or invisible piston heads, perhaps. That's also incidentally destroyed all of the netherrack that I put down there because TNT minecart explosions are big. They're actually, I think, bigger than a TNT explosion, but you're also putting five more iron into the recipe. So that sort of makes sense. Now we place a sticky piston here and we remove this redstone block before we do anything else. So effectively, whoa, okay, <laughs> let me peel it back up from that. Effectively, we remove any chance this piston has of updating through the redstone power there. And instead we power this piston here. So it swaps over that piston head because it's updating this block, turning it back into a regular piston at exactly the same time this one extends. Stop me if I'm getting any of this wrong because I feel like I am. Then the next step is to come around here, apply the lever to this block there and then we uh, basically, because the lever is activated there, it's now powering this piston and this piston, which effectively keeps them extended if they had piston heads, which right now they don't. So <laughs> that's actually what keeps them in this state where the piston head is invisible and allows us to remove all of the redstone sources around the outside of them. Then we place the sticky piston there, which activates because there's a lever powering that block. We place the slime block on there, the building block on here, and a piston facing downwards into the area underneath this. And that is kind of an important step because the slime block is going to drag this piston into this space. But then we also place another piston facing out that way and it deactivates at the same time as this one gets pulled across. This is the bit that's a little bit weird to me. This is the bit that I don't quite understand as far as piston updates goes. But once again, if we pull this block now, the piston pops out like so and we have another hole in our bedrock directly underneath where that minecart was. So the method itself just seems so weird and esoteric, but it works perfectly. So like I said, this has been a weird episode. This has been an episode that I didn't expect to insert it 
this early into the series. I expected Breaking Bedrock to be a very far future end game kind of thing. But in a way, you also kind of have to take advantage of this stuff when you can, because you never know when glitches like this are going to be completely removed from the game by a new update or new features being added or something like that. Up until a recent update, I think it was the 1.13 update that broke this, it was possible to break the bedrock using dragon eggs, and duplicating dragon eggs was a really important part of the game. <laughs> now it's not really possible to do that method anymore, as far as I'm aware, so this is kind of the, the best method to do it that I've seen. There may be other methods out there, and I'm pretty sure in a recent episode of Hermitcraft, Impulse SV had a very interesting way of breaking bedrock, which we might end up exploring in a different episode. But for now, I think that's going to be it. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys enjoy this. And it's going to be really interesting to see what we can do now we have access to the nether roof. But we're going to cover that in far future episodes, I'm sure. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.